Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy David and I'm coming at you with another episode of the Free Play Mode presents the Quick Hit and today is November 7th, 2015 and I'm joined by co-founder of the new gaming order, Nelson Rios. What's going down, Nelson? Not man, just enjoying my Saturday morning, trying to see what's going down and again, as always, thank you for having me on Free Play Mode. No doubt, man. So, what we're going to get into today is uh, the PlayStation Nintendo CD prototype was confirmed today by Engadget to actually be the real deal. They actually turned it on, booted it up, played a game. It was There are no CD games in existence for the thing, but they did play a Super Famicom game on it. They went into the BIOS, they opened it up and confirmed that it was in fact the real deal. So what do you think about this? Like, is it a significant thing in gaming history that this actually exists outside of pictures like that you can actually see the thing working? I mean, I believe it is actually something to make a big deal out of because people would have never thought even from now going backwards that, you know, Nintendo and Sony were actually coexisting to make a dual bootable console that played Super Famicom games or as you guys know as Super Nintendo cartridges and original PlayStation CDs. So this was actually a big innovative uh, thing. It was a pretty big deal back then actually. Yeah, and, and to tell you how close this thing was to actual release, they showed the version number of the BIOS and it was .95 which means it was super super close to actually being released to the market. And then Nintendo had to go do some dumb shit and do their behind the scenes deal with Philips and have games made. They kind of hedged their bet, so to speak, and signed a deal with Philips to have Philips do games that were published by Nintendo but made by Philips. So how badly do you think Nintendo is kicking themselves having, like, seen this thing out in the wild because before today it was thought to be like some myth or like some long dead and buried thing but this has been rehashed and it's kicking nintendo in the face over and over again <laughs> yes it is it, it definitely is i i'm really shocked when i first heard the news about uh this actually coming back after they try to hide it so well and someone actually finally got their hands on it and was able to test it as you mentioned you know they played uh the original street fighter 2 on there they played a couple of the games they even showed the framework of the system of how it was done and made they showed the bios version and everything and it to me it would have been a great concept of a machine if it actually did release and did not get held up by whoever's in what whether if it was nintendo or, or sony's and stuff like that i had no idea who had complete control but like the, how it got held up was essentially like Nintendo and Sony entered into this partnership to have a CD based add on for the Super Nintendo and Super Famicom made in response to the Sega CD. Mm -hmm. And let's be real here the Sega CD was not anything special, it was a piece of shit. Right. But Nintendo was growing worried and they kind of hedged their bets, so to speak. So they did a kind of behind the scenes deal with Philips to put Nintendo games on their new CD based can't even really call it a video game console because the CDI wasn't really made to be a video game console yes it played video games but that wasn't the main function of the device and Sony got wind of this and they scrapped the entire project and but the thing is Sony owned all the rights to the technology that it created so instead of it be being a CD based add on for a console, Sony, like the thing was very close to actual release. So Sony just went back, did a, did a couple of uh, more years of R and D with 3d technology, better sound and boom, Nintendo ended up creating one of its biggest rivals, which may up and ending up putting them out of the console market and the Sony PlayStation. Yep. That is very true, but again, it's a very interesting thing to actually see this console come 
out from the woodworks like this. Like someone actually stumbled upon this from God knows where. And it ended up in someone's fucking uh, studio or company. And they played the shit out of that motherfucker. <laughs> I tell Yo, you. Man, I was I was like, man, I had to watch the video multiple times because like I got I got all tingly. I got excited for it. I was like, because I remember reading about this back in the day in the EGM. Because I was, I was a fan of both the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. And I had a Sega CD. And I was very unimpressed by it. And I saw this, like, announced in the EGM back in the day. And I got excited for it. And then nothing came of it. And it kind of pissed me off a little bit. But then the PlayStation came out. But I, at that time, I already had a Sega Saturn. But, man, what, what do you think would have happened had Nintendo not done what it did and maintain the partnership with Sony. Wow. I hmm, that could have had been led to a lot of possibilities, especially like we're in 2015 now. This product was made around like let's say 1990, 1991. Yeah. So it it could have definitely turned heads where you know shit, PlayStation and Nintendo working together as one entity motherfuckers they would have took over more or less created the revolution of the the new wave of gaming but uh, again we will never know i mean nintendo kind of took a big hit and as you mentioned earlier they must be kicking themselves right in the fucking ass for making this decision i mean just the just the sheer possibilities because i don't think that Sega would have held as on as long as they did had Sony maintained its partnership with Nintendo. Mm. Because let let's be real here, Sega was like pretty on they were on wobbly legs by the time the Sega Saturn came out, and then they were on the deathbed when the Sega Dreamcast came out. I don't even think they would have made it to the Sega Dreamcast had Nintendo and Sony remained partners in all seriousness. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there would have been a Microsoft console, and I I just think that we would have had the the Sega and Nintendo the Sega Sony, hi ah uh, the Nintendo Sony hybrid console slash partnership going forward, and they would have continued to make consoles together going forward. That is true. But man, man, just just the sheer possibilities of what a potential partnership. For Nintendo and Sony, what could have been? It's just, it's just mind blowing. It's just mind blowing. Definitely is, man. I mean, again, this could have made, excuse me, actual history. But I guess Nintendo back then, whoever the hell was in charge, just thought that it wasn't a wise enough decision for them to go through with this business deal or the Nintendo PlayStation prototype that apparently was about to become a real thing. So. Well, I want to know what you guys down there in the comment section think. What do you think would have become of Nintendo and Sony had they remained partners? And if you're looking for the the video to the Engadget unveiling of this thing, it's in the description below. I want to thank Nelson Rios for popping up on the quick hit. Give a shout out to the new gaming order, Nelson. Uh, thank you guys again for you know free play month for having me on again as a guest um, go to newgamingorder.com we support everything as of reviews, podcasts you know hopefully in tournaments and so on and so on and again man this, this partnership that me and uh, free play mode got going man it's a good thing and hopefully you guys are watching both of us at the, the same value so well I, again man much love for being on the show and we want to thank you, the free play mode fans and the new gaming order fans out there for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe to both channels. That's free play mode and new gaming order. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Please explain why you don't. Be courteous. At least show me that kind of courtesy. And I want to hope all of you out there have a good morning on this November 7th, 2015. And as always, peace. We're out.